Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this radio controlled early production Armortech Tiger 1. Since the last video update, a lot of progress has been made to the tank's hull. As we can see, the hull has been painted, pre-weathered, as well as the installation of the row wheels and other components have been added. We'll be going over these additions in more detail in this video. And here are the parts here required to assemble the road wheels. Parts break down as follows. You have the actual road wheel itself, a rubber tire, two styles of columns, two styles of end plate hubcaps, two styles of mounting disc and a lot of ball bearings. Now it's important to note that I recently uploaded a video of the 2003 version of the Armored Tech Tiger 1 in which there I go and describe the differences between the two row wheel designs. It's an interesting video to watch and I strongly recommend watching it in case you haven't seen it yet. As over there, I describe how the wheels actually assemble and the actual design of the way the parts are broken down. It's important to note because the two designs are very similar, but this version here is much more improved and refined compared to the earlier release. First difference between the two kits is that the, all the components that you see on the table here are made out of CNC aluminum while on the older kit they are made of cast aluminum alloy. It's important to note as these wheels are going to be much lighter compared to the other versions and are also much more accurate in tune to the real vehicle as opposed to the cast versions on the first batch release. Second difference is that the earlier version of the Armortech kit for the double wheel they utilize the wheel in having a one casting that has the two areas for the tires to be positioned on. For this version of the kit, Armortech redesigned it and feature only one style of wheel, which depending on the flange work is either a double or a single. This is very prototypical and very close to true to the actual Tiger 1 itself. As for the flange work, there are two styles of flanges that we have here. There is the long version and the short version. Now visually they look identical. The difference being is in the depth of the wells that are machined into the center portions of the columns. In order to prevent any confusion, as visually the parts do look identical, Armortech on the long hub version machined this recess into the component in order to prevent any sort of confusion with the orientation. One portion of the wheel design, however, that's very reminiscent and almost unchanged from the original release is that of the retention disc. Just like with the other version, there are two styles of discs, one for the inner and outer road wheels. The one difference, however, is that these pieces here have countersunk fasteners as opposed to just the cap screws which were used on the first release. And for the bigger discs here, they're made out of CNC aluminum as opposed to steel. The thinner discs appear to be made of steel, just like the original release. Another portion that remains almost completely unchanged is that of the retention hubcaps. They're all made out of CNC aluminum and differ in depth depending on the inner and outer wheels. These pieces here are almost a dead ringer from the first generation release as the first generation release versions were very nicely done as well. Because of the machining on the flange work, I found that the tolerances between the flange and the road wheel are very, very, very tight. So tight that the pieces will have a hard time fitting into each other once it comes time for the assembly. If the pieces are not completely flush with each other, it can possibly cause, cause timing issues with the road wheels in that they won't be true and they might possibly be somewhat out of spec. 
A simple way to remedy it is I go ahead and on my bench grinder, I remove just a very finite amount of material around the rim. In addition to removing any material around the rim, I went ahead and take to bird any type of burrs that the grinder would have left behind, which is what you saw me doing earlier. Now, the same procedure could also be done on the lathe. However, for the purposes of this build, the bench grinder performed the same exact performance as well as did it in a lot faster timeline compared to done on the machine lathe. However, a machine lathe can easily be used again in case this procedure might be deemed too risky to use on the bench grinder. And here are the wheels just prior to the, the installation of the rubber tire and the installation on the tank. As you can see, all the components have been pre-primed, pre-painted with their base coat, and have some airbrush weathering done to them. Just like I frequently mention on my videos, at this point of the build, it is a good idea to go ahead and add the base coat and the weathering to the road wheels, as once these components are installed to the tank, it is going to be almost impossible to get a thorough coat on all the components. So when they're at this phase here, it does simplify the procedure. In addition to painting the road wheels, I went ahead and also pre-assembled the inner portion of the single and double wheels by mounting on the appropriate column to the pieces. The pieces get bolted on via fasteners, just like I mentioned before, and the purpose of mounting these components on now is that if these were done after everything was painted, it would have complicated the matters as the pieces are all bolt together assembly, which would have scuffed and scratched the paint. By doing this step here, it streamlines the production as well as simplifies the orientation of all the components once time for installation. Once the weathering is out of the way, it's now time to mount on the tank's rubber tires. Just like with all Armor Tech tanks, the rubber tires are an actual rubber tire that gets press fitted onto the road wheel hub on a machine surface that we have here. As for the adhesives, adhesives are absolutely mandatory for this application as the rubber tire can get loose and fall off the rim, which can cause nothing but issues once the tank is completed. For the actual adhesives, I'm, I'm utilizing this material here. It's found in hobby shops and is a, the type of glue that it's utilized to glue rubber tires onto hubs for radio control cars. I've used this on a few other builds in the past with pretty acceptable results. As for the application, you don't want to put too much on the rim that it's dripping with glue, but you don't want to have too sparse so that the piece can easily pop off. It's also important to note that the Tiger one has a lot of road wheels like what was seen in the previous scene. So much so that one bottle is just barely enough to finish installing the road wheel on all of the components. It is a wise idea to get a second bottle so that in case you run out, you're not that guy that has to run all the way to the hobby shop just to buy another two bottle of glue because he ran out and was short. It's also important when mounting on the tire to make sure that it is completely and thoroughly and evenly mounted to its proper location. If the glue sets and the tire is off and is skewed somewhat, that can cause issues with mechanical problems as the rubber tire can rub up against other hubs and other rubber tires, which can cause wear, as well as dislodgements of the tire, which again will cause nothing but headaches and problems down the road. To install the tire, I will apply a bead of glue to the rim area. I will also put four dabs on the rim. Once the glue is positioned on, I will take the tire and simply slide it into its location. Like I said before, once it's slipped on, you want to thoroughly go ahead and pinch the tire to the rim to make sure that it's even and that it does not overhang in any locations on the tire. Is at this time too to go ahead and wipe off any material or any excess glue that may be found from the insertion process. Now it's important to keep your hands nice and clean as when you're handling all the other road wheels not to get fingerprints or any other type of 
of impurities onto the tire and the hub, which can lead to the pieces looking ugly. As for the double tire wheel, the same procedure gets utilized with the same method. The only difference is that it is a smart idea to do one tire at a time. By doing, if the glue is applied to both rims and then both tires are tried to be inserted simultaneously, this can lead to the piece being more sloppier as now you have more glue overhang to contest with. And also, with the alignment, you'll be too busy trying to align one tire that the other tire, the glues might set on before the, the other tire can be correctly inserted into place. So it is a good idea to do two separately. Just like with all ArmorTech tanks, the road wheels rotate on the main axle via ball bearings. The ball bearings are supplied with the kit and the cavities are pre-CNC'd like was mentioned earlier. Now, one thing about this kit I noticed is that the tolerances on the row wheel and the column are very, very tight and will prevent the ball bearing from properly seating in. Keep in mind, the pieces do also have a coat of primer on which also add to the thickness and further make the piece stiffer. Similar what was done on the other Tiger one on the bushings, I will need to slightly open up the hole in the tolerances to allow the ball bearing to slide in. For that, I'll be using again a Dremel with a full size sanding drum. And just like with the other component, I'm going to just briefly hit the inside diameter, just removing just enough material to allow access of the ball bearing. Just like with the last video, I'll be doing this in real time. And just like with the last procedure, you want to do this with extra care. Basically, the portion that you want to go ahead and enlarge are the portions where the wheel meets the column. As this seems like it's the portion here that's inhibiting the ball bearing from making contact. Again, I just briefly just go over the surface as evenly as possible. Once the piece is flared out, the ball bearing should be able to just drop right in. Like One side effect of the procedure is that it does create a little bit of powder that is a very fine layer that's found on the wheel. You do not want to install the wheel sit tank with this particulate on it. However, it is very easily removed with an air compressor and a blowgun. A couple toots, and the wheel is totally clean. This procedure is actually very important in that if you try to install the row wheel with the bearing and the bearing gets stuck and you try to brute force your way in with a rubber mallet or a hammer, you, you can cause damage to the ball bearing and possibly to the row wheel itself. Both situations are less than ideal. And here goes the lower hull now with the row wheel assembly started. As you see just prior to the wheels, I went ahead and also added the airbrush weathering to the lower portion of the hull. This was done in the same manner and for the same reasons that I did it for the road wheels in that once the wheels are on, access to this location will be very difficult, if not impossible. As you can see, I went ahead and installed the first layer of road wheels. And just like with the other Tiger 1 model that I just am working on, as well as the real Tiger tank itself, the road wheels need to be inserted on in a set of layers. First with this single wheel and then with the double wheel, which is soon to be added. And here's the opposite side just prior to the installation of the wheels. As you can see, prior to installing all the row wheels, I am going to peel off the protective layer of tape and then apply a thin smear of grease to the axles. Just like I mentioned on all my vids, the purpose of the grease is that it helps protect the steel from corrosion, as well as help aids with the 
insertion and assembly of the wheels and also helps everything run and roll a lot smoothly. As for installing the rubber wheel onto the axle, it's a very simple procedure. Some of the tools you will need will be a rubber mallet, as well as good to have a small PVC tube or a dowel rod of similar size on hand. Purpose of the dowel rod is to sometimes guide the ball bearing and nest it into its proper location. This of course, depending on how much material was removed during the widening procedure that was shown earlier. As for the actual installation, it's quite simple. You just line up the ball bearing. In this case, it just slid right in. Then take the wheel, slide it onto the axle. Then with the other ball bearing, line it up and tap it in until the piece is firmly seated. Once installed, the row wheel layer is complete and ready for its next layer. Once the first layer is done, it is then time to install the second layer. As you can see, the second layer has already been installed on the opposite side, and here I'm down to the last two. Now, installing the second layer is a little bit different of a procedure than installing the first layer. It's also much different than on the other ArmorTech Tiger that I recently completed. The system still installs the same way. You have ball bearings, which are sandwiched in between the two portions of the column, which support the wheel and keep it turning nice and true. The difference is that installing the wheel is a little bit different due to the flange work. Because of the two columns, inserting the wheel is gonna take a little bit of pivoting. This is not gonna be easily done with a ball bearing pre-inserted into the well. So what you do is you pre-install the ball bearing first by sliding it onto the shaft. And then from there, you seat on the road wheel. Now, it may take a little bit of fiddling, and you may also need to press down on one of the torsion bars in order to get the proper clearance for the wheel to be inserted. You also may have a ball bearing or two pop off of one of the other wheels. It's also very important to do this procedure prior to installing the mounting fastener as once the pieces are mounted on you will have a harder time in maneuvering and pivoting the wheel into its location. Once the row wheel is mounted on just like with the other set you take the other ball bearing and slide it onto where it needs to go. Now because of the deeper well this is where the PVC tube is beneficial and again just slightly tap it into place until it's seated where it needs to be. Now the first road wheel is a little bit of a different procedure and is much easier due to the fact that you're not restricted with having another road wheel on the opposite side. With this one here you could try to install it in the exact same manner I mentioned above or you can install it like the way you did with the first layer by inserting the ball bearing and sliding it into its location. Once the first two layers of row wheels are installed, this is where the, the design really starts to change compared to the earlier releases from ArmorTech. If anyone hasn't already seen the other video series on my channel on the earlier version of the Armor Tech kit, I advise to do so. Because at this point here on the other Armor Tech kit, I would go ahead and slip on the columns to which then another final layer of row wheels would be mounted. On this version here, the design has been improved and has been more refined, which makes it a little bit different. At this point here, this is where I go ahead and mount on the locking plates, which will bolt and permanently mount the row wheel to the swing arm and to the tank. This has to be done now, as once the other layers start getting mounted on, with the way the fasteners are designed, it's going to be a lot more difficult in mounting the parts on if the row wheels are still loose. 
as it will fall off the axle and it will add complication and more delay to the procedure. As for the installation procedure, this is remarkably identical to the earlier units. As a quick note, you'll see that the pieces have been pre-primed prior to the filming of this scene. Now also, what's important to note is that just like on the other kit, orientation of the parts is absolutely crucial, as the parts can easily be swapped and will have detriment with the later installation of the wheels. And once you hit that point, you're going to realize that you have to undo most of everything to reinstall the pieces properly. So care is need to be exerted. Namely, the pieces are not switchable. The smaller retention plate here is actually for the deeper weld single road wheel, while the fatter plate is for the inner double road wheel. As for the installation, one thing that I always stress is that Loctite is absolutely important on the installation of these parts. I cannot stress this enough as you literally do not want these parts, these fasteners, backing out and loosening on you while the tank's in operation because it will cause literally nothing but problems. So with that out of the way, I will simply now bolt the pieces to their appropriate location. Now, also, another real big improvement on this version compared to the older units is that on the older units, when I would install the piece, I would have to tighten it and then slowly back out and gauge on how well the piece rotates. As the other pieces, I noticed, were constricting on the bearing, and the tighter you went, the more it was constrictive, and you had to slowly back out till you had a nice happy medium where the wheel would rotate freely, and the piece would still stay on absolutely securely. On this newer redesigned version of the Armor Tech tank, this, as you can see, is not necessary as I was able to crank down on the fastener. However, the wheel spins absolutely freely and secure at the same time. Another improvement is that as for the actual fasteners themselves, Armor Tech went ahead and used one fastener for all of the road wheels. This is a bit of an improvement as on the last tank, you would have two types of cap screws, a long and a short one, in order for the different inner and outer road wheels. With this design here, they went ahead and streamlined assembly, as well as you're not gonna get confused and mix match any of the wrong parts. Also, if for whatever reason, one of the screws gets lost, it's just one fastener to replace it with, as opposed to trying to mix and match to, until you have the right one. Just like before, this guy here, Got some all important red thread lock. And I mount it on. And the row wheels are now mounted to the tank. As you can see, they rotate absolutely fluidly, and the suspension is working properly. It is at this point now where I can start mounting on the second and final layer of road wheels. With the wheels now attached to the model, it is now time to add on the remainder layer of road wheels. Starting with first the double road wheel that we have here. Now, unlike the earlier incarnations of this kit, in which these wheels here would have been one casting that would have been mounted and locked onto the axle via the center of mount. With the redesigned version, this is a little bit different. The row wheels actually mount onto the center column, like what was mentioned earlier, via a row of fasteners. On the other kit, the fasteners would really more or less for aesthetics and detail and for mounting on the hubcap. However, on this model here, in addition to mounting on the hubcap, these fasteners are what mount the tires to the column, completing the whole wheel cluster. This is a nice 
detail feature and also is one that makes for a nicely engineered build. Now, prior to the mounting of the wheel onto the spindle, I went ahead and with a with the Dremel with the sanding drum, I went ahead and slightly opened up the tolerances on the center portion here. In a similar way, which was showcased earlier for slipping on of the ball bearings, the reason for that is for this, the insertion of the hubcap. The hubcaps do slip on as per the kit. However, just like a lot of the pieces, the tolerances are very, very tight. And with the extra layers of paint can make for a little bit of difficulty in the insertion of the components. In addition to opening up the tolerances on the wheel, on the hubcaps themselves, a similar procedure was also done, but was done to the outside rim diameter of the piece. For the same reasons why I mentioned before, the, a small, about a hundred, about a thousandth of an inch was removed via a lathe by the removal of this material it again opens up the tolerances and makes for the piece to slide on to the component in a nice precise manner in addition to adjusting the tolerances i also went ahead and added the mod of adding the extra fastener locations on the hubcap the tiger one's hubcap does feature more fastener mounts than what are found on the kit. Now, to add the holes, it was a simple addition. It was done on a drill press, which ensured a nice flat and squared hole, which was drilled through the plate. The addition was a simple mod and one that does help the look and the accuracy of the piece. As for the installation, just like what was mentioned earlier and in the other video, the inner and outer wheels use different hubcaps. For the double wheel, you'll like this one here, you'll be using the thin hubcap. The installation is quite simple. You hold onto the rear portion of the fastener and you slide on the hubcap by indexing on the fasteners and the piece should simply drop right in as such. At this point here, you can go ahead and add the thread lock to the fasteners which again is kind of mandatory and beneficial in preventing the fasteners from getting loose while the model is in operation. With the Loctite now added it is now time to add on the fasteners. They simply just thread on and just like with mounting lug nuts on a car tire, done in a similar manner. With the row of fasteners now tightened, the wheel is complete. Now one thing to note is that you want to, like I said, go in layers. After this version, and rather than putting on the outer row wheel, you're going to need to put on the double row wheels until they're all complete on the tank, to which then you will start on the final layer. Now, it's important to note that due to the way the fasteners are designed, they emerge from the row wheel a little bit more than they should on the real tank. Now it's a quick fix with a Dremel with a cutting stone I will go ahead and shorten these fasteners to a more appropriate height. This needs to be done pr prior to the installation of the outer road wheel. And here are the fasteners now with the tips shortened to the appropriate length. In addition to cutting off the extra, the Dremel also goes ahead and flattens the ground cut that was just made. A similar procedure will also need to be done to the outer road wheel as well in order to get everything to look in unison.
And here goes the side of the hull with the final layer of row wheels now fitted. Just before I put on the last row wheel, I just want to take a second to talk about the front wheel position here and some options that are available to the modeler. The Tiger One does feature a row wheel in this location. However, it was a common practice of in-field mods to leave this row wheel off. The purpose of that is for the crew to get easier access to the tank sprocket. If you look at a lot of infield photographs, you'll see several vehicles with the front row wheel missing. The tank can still operate without the row wheel just fine, and like I said before, without that extra layer, it gets access to the sprocket with a lot more ease. One, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because with the design of this version of the Armor Tech kit, this option of displaying the vehicle in this manner is available to the modeler as opposed to the older version in which making a model like this would require some heavy modifications to the kit components with this version here out of box you simply don't install the wheel and you have the desired effect and here's the tank now with all of the row wheels installed as you can see they all roll absolutely freely and effortlessly and the suspension articulates and returns back to the home state once the force is taking off of it. And here's another angle of the road wheels. As you can see the alignment needs to be exact on these type of German tanks due to all of the road wheels having to time and mesh perfectly with the track. Also one difference we can see is that if we recall from the other early Tiger One video in which those wheels had a little bit of play in them in order to make way for any type of material that enters into the track. That feature was eliminated on these newer production versions of the Armor Tech kits. And as you can see, are absolutely solid. Also, like we can see, unlike the other wheels in which the pieces were all separate, and would just roll together with this version here. The wheels are permanently mounted to each other on the center spindle and are one complete unit. And that concludes this project update video for this 1-6 scale radio controlled Armor Tech early production Tiger. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thank you.